what does it take to live to 100 or beyond? As you will see, the answer is not what we expect. Julianne Holt Lundstedt is a researcher at Brigham Young University, and she addressed this very question in a series of studies of tens of thousands of middle-aged people. And she looked at every aspect of their lifestyle: their diet, their exercise, their marital status, how often they went to the doctor, whether they smoked or drank, etc. She recorded all of this, and then she and her colleagues sat tight and waited for seven years to see who would still be breathing. And of the people left standing, what reduced their chances of dying the most? That was her question. So let's now look at her data in summary, going from the least powerful predictor to the strong. How much exercise you get is next, still only a moderate predictor. Does anybody here know that having a flu vaccine protects you more than doing exercise? And getting towards the top predictors. Are two features of your social life. First, your close relationships. These are the people that you can call on for a loan if you need money suddenly, who will call the doctor if you're not feeling well, or who will take you to the hospital, or who will sit with you if you're having an existential crisis, if you're in despair. That. Those people, that little clutch of people, are a strong predictor if you have them of how long you live. And then something that surprised me, something that's called social integration. This means how much you interact with people as you move through your day. How many people do you talk to? So not just the people you're really close to who mean a lot to you, but like, do you talk to the guy who every day makes you your coffee? Um, do you talk to the postman? Do you talk to the woman who walks by your house every day with her dog? Do you play bridge or poker or have a book club? Those interactions are one of the strongest predictors of how long you live.